Hey guys, so today we're going to do a tutorial on how to set up a custom character mesh in the survival game template. Now we're going to use this pack here called the Enforcer Rig and there's a couple of reasons for that. One, someone specifically requested this one, so I thought I'd cover that. And two, it's actually a really cool setup that's got a whole lot of different armors um, that go on top of a skeleton here. So you've got this as your basic skeleton and then you've got different types of armors and different size armors and all that sort of thing. So we're actually going to set up the skeleton to work with the animations and then also set up some basic armor pieces so I can go over how to use armor meshes as well. So let's just open up our survival map first. Now, so what we need to do is we need to retarget the um, the enforcer rig. We need to get the enforcer skeleton working with our animation, uh, the survival game template animation. So what we're going to do is go into Content SGT Animations and this guy here, the SGT Animation Blueprint. We're going to make a duplicate of that so that we've still got the original always go back to if we need. So we'll just add underscore enforcer on the end. Um, now I do apologise if I misclick a couple of times. I've got a new mouse and it's a bit more sensitive than I'm used to, so I'm getting used to that. Um, so once you've got that, just click Save. And what we want to do is open up both of the skeletons we have. So go into content SGT meshes character and open up the the default mannequin or the survival game template mannequin and get back out. Go into our character mesh. In this case, that's the enforcer skeleton. And we can find the skeleton that way if in case you don't know where it is. And what we want to do is first of all just Add these to the retarget manager. So you click on this retarget manager here, click add new retarget source, you select this guy which is the enforcer skeleton and then we select humanoid. Now this is only going to work properly with humanoid ones. Um, you can click auto mapping and that should generally fix it. If you've got different skeletons, so like the Mixamo skeletons, you'll actually need to sit here and line up the right bones but the ones from the marketplace should if they're humanoid ones all work pretty easily you just want to hit save pose then do the same in our <coughs> mannequin I'm going to add new retarget source oh, we've already got that one here but I'll show you how to do it anyway so we click on mannequin body and we would do the same thing humanoid auto mapping save pose once we've done that we can go back, we can close all those, go all the way back to our animation blueprint, right click and go retarget, duplicate and retarget. We want to click on the enforcer rig, make sure they look the same, they should always, like if you're using a humanoid one, they should always be in this T-pose. Once we're done, we just hit retarget and we've made a copy of all the animations. So then we'll click save all. So we've got them there, and then what we want to do is jump into Blueprints, Game, and Survival Character. <coughs> now we want the viewport, click on Mesh, and then we just select our um, Enforcer. So we want Enforcer Skeleton. Now it's going to look a little bit silly. But bear with me. Under Anim class, we want to go down to. Oh, we've got two of them here. Why is that? Ah, uh, because I duplicated it first. You don't need to duplicate it first. It doesn't matter if you did. You don't need to. So we will delete that one. So we've just got the one that was made. So when you right click and go retarget, it actually duplicates itself. So you don't need to make a copy there. Um. So now I've got to open up the blueprint again. and back to mesh, viewport, and select enforcer. So there we've got that. Now obviously the head's in the wrong spot. Um, and we've actually got a head attached to the character here. So this is a common question I get. The reason the head is separated from the body, <coughs> excuse me, is that when you go into first person, the camera sits right here. And as you can see, that's in the character's body. Now when you move, say sprinting, sometimes the head bobs forward and you get some clipping from the camera seeing that. 
So what we do is we settle up so that when we're in first person, and you don't have to do this manually, it's uh, rendering. No, when we're in first person, sorry, on the he head mesh, this setting here gets toggled on, own and OC. So that that way, when you're in first person, the head's actually not there, but the cat shadow is still being cast. Um, but the other people can still see the head. So, if you have a character where the head is attached to the body, that's fine. You have two options. Either you can go into a 3D modeling program like Maya or Blender, separate them and make two separate meshes. Um, I'm not an artist and I'm not going to go over that process because I will get it wrong. Um, but you can also just turn, like hide the head mesh and that's fine. And you can turn it off here so it's not visible there as well. Um, so then what we want to do next is we want to make sure we've got everything set up right. So for instance the flashlight needs to be bound to a socket called flashlight. Pardon me. So we want to open up our skeleton again. And we want to go to skeleton tree and we just want to add in a couple of sockets here. And there's two. Now one is on I think spine three, but let's check to make sure. So what we're gonna do is go into the survival game template mannequin and check where those sockets are attached. So you wanna look for this icon here, this means socket. So we can minimize all the things. Okay, so we can see that the weapon socket is attached to hand R and the flashlight socket is attached to spine 3. So in here we right click on spine 3, go add socket and just call it flashlight. And the weapon, we just want to go in called weapon slot, add to hand R, same deal in here, find hand R, right click and go weapon socket. Now to get these right, um, what you can do for the flashlight, the weapons should work as they are. For the flashlight, if you want to use the flashlight included, you just need to find that mesh, which is this one here, and then make sure it's set up right. So obviously we're going to rotate it. Oops, that was one too many. I kind of want to leave it in as in there so he looks like a crazy robot with the light coming up but once we put armor on him we're not going to be able to see that so we will just move it over there and that's a bit big for him so we could also scale this down if we wanted that looks a bit better take it up just put it there so you can mess around with this as much as you want i'm just going to leave it there and then we just want to make sure everything's still attached. Sometimes when you don't have the sockets, they get detached. So the flashlight and the weapon we don't need to worry about. So if we hit compile and save, fingers crossed. There we go, we have him working in and he's working with all our animations. So we've got him working in here just as we want him to. So that's how you get the character in there. Really easy process. Um, the clipping, what I'll show you in first person. So it's fine when you walk, when you run, you can see his head pops in there. So there is a couple of solutions to this. You can attach the um, head to the head bone on the mesh. I don't like this result personally, but if you do this, you can work. Hopefully I've done this right. The reason I don't like this is when you run in third person, I feel like it looks a bit weird, but that should... Oh, we've still got some issues there. Um, so really you want to either move the location forward or... Um, I just stuffed up that camera. No. So really what you want to do there is move this forward a little bit camera boom because when it's in first person the setting zero so that's still a bit far back but you're going to end up with issues with not being able to see the gun as much and that sort of thing 
Um, so you can play around with that and get that just right, or you really want to pull apart the um, mesh and have a separate head. Might even be able to parent that, but I'm not sure. We'll leave that. But so that's how you get the mesh in. Now for the second part of this, what we want to do is actually add some armor. So this guy has a whole lot of armor um, that comes with it. So if we jump back out into the enforcer set, we go meshes, and let's look at the heavy armor. So we've got a headpiece here, and that flashlight is showing up because we've got a preview mesh here, which we can now delete. So that's a head mesh. And we've got a left arm, and some other pieces. Now, the legs here are joined. By default, the survival game template lets you have a separate left and leg armor piece. So you would want to actually just go into a 3D modeling program and cut that in half, or change the system so that it's separate, however you want to do it. So we will do the torso, let's say. <clears throat> now this is easy. This is a skele skeletal mesh already rigged to the skeleton. Um, so all we actually need to do for this is just make a new piece. So if we go back into survival game template, blueprints, data, and open up our data table, we can add a new row, give it a name, so we'll call it Enforcer Armor Heavy Torso, and give it a name for the actual inventory screen, Heavy Enforcer armor torso now thumbnail we don't have a thumbnail for it so let's just make one really quickly now, Photoshop open for that while we're doing this um, so we're doing the torso so let's just do a really rough one like that uh, you guys can't see me doing a print screen. I just made a copy of this around there. Just wait for Photoshop to open. While that's going, we can actually do the, another step, and I'll do it bit by bit. Come on, Photoshop. And it's a little bit slow because I'm recording and got a couple of instances of. Unreal open, but that's how it goes. Um, it should also be mentioned I'm using the latest version of the template which now is available on the marketplace. There were some issues on Epic's end getting um, the update process because they lost it, but that's been sorted now. So we go create. Copy and paste this in, select all this so it's gone. Just get rid of all this bit too. What do I do? We've got a really rough one there. That'll do that. So we'll just give it a stroke outline to make it a little bit easier to see. That'll do. Save that as a PNG. And let's put that in the folder I know it's in. Projects, tutorials, tutorial enforcer. Let's call this torso. Armor should be right here. So we can just drag and drop that in. I'll just drag into this folder. It'd normally be a bit neater than this, but I get this done quicker. And then because it's a UI one, we want to make sure this is set. To, uh, make sure the texture group is set to UI. And that allows it to do transparency correctly and compress it properly, I believe, as well. So we can jump back into here and we can set this up to also, so that's there. This heavy armor for the enforcer bot 
goes on his torso. That'll do. And we set this to armor, and we give it a weight. So say 10 kilos, because it looks like a heavy piece. And we can make it destructible and droppable. Max stack has to be one. And then pick up mesh. So this is the next bit. We need a mesh to pick up. Now you can't use skeletal meshes. Um, I may be adding this in, but so the easiest way to get a um, static mesh version of this, just export it. Where did that go to? And to here, drag this out here. Just rename it. Click on don't import there if that pops up. And then what we want to do is just drag this in. So we've just exported it as a skeletal mesh, but we're going to import it as a static mesh. And we don't want materials because we're or textures because we've already got those. And if we open up this one and this one as well first. Click on this guy to find his texture. You know what? Let's make it a little bit more interesting. Let's make it stand out for the pickup. There we go. So it won't look like this on him, but at least it'll stand out when we're picking it up. Um, now again, realistically, you should take this into a uh, 3D modeling software because it's actually going to sit up just like this and possibly above the ground. But we're just doing a quick one here. So we want to find this in the content browser, which I cannot remember how we do. I set finding content browser, so we're back to there. And under the armor, we want to give it the pickup mesh that we've got selected there. You can go through set up sounds if you want. We're not going to do that. Um, equipment type, we want to set it to torso. And then equipment mesh, we want this one here. And then give it an armor rating, so we'll say this one's 15. And that should be it for that. So now we should be able to make a copy of this pickup and set that to our Enforcer Heavy Armor. Yep, see it? So it's going to sit up in the air like... Whoops, that was the wrong button. Sit up in the air like that because it's that's where it's told to sit. Um, so you could go through and mess with the import translations. It's just easier just to jump into a um, modeling software, drop it down, make it rotate so it's on the side. But it'll work for our purposes. So we can go over to this. You can see it's already interactive. We pick it up. It's right here. And we equip it. And there it's on our character. So that's how you get a character in and use some armor pieces as well. I hope that was helpful. Um, if you have any other integration tutorials you would like covered, please let me know and we can sort that out. Um, I've just noticed the head is actually still casting a shadow. So if I just here, the way we fix that is just to jump back into jump back into survival game, blueprints, game, character, and on the head we just find rendering and nope sorry lighting I think it is lighting yep and we turn off hidden shadow that should sort that out yep there we go so that's how you get that one going guys if you have any questions or suggestions for other tutorials please let me know and other than that cheers for watching